Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to yet another reaction video to some more Game Theory FNAF. I honestly was not expecting Matt to post another FNAF Game Theory video, but here we are, you know, he's pumping these things out. I get it, new FNAF game, you gotta make content, but... You know, maybe slow your roll a bit, Matt. Last episode, if you missed it, it'll be linked down below. I highly recommend watching that one, because it was, uh... It was interesting. <laughs> For the record, I know during the reactions, I don't like pausing it because I know you guys don't like when I pause things. So it's difficult for me to kind of explain my thought process on the theory. But let me get this straight. I do not want Gregory to be a robot. I don't think he's a robot. I really, really hope he's not a robot. Do I think he's the crying child? I don't know. Do I think Glamrock Freddy is possessed by Michael? I don't know. I guess I can kind of see that one. I think he also said at the end of that video that he's going to talk about Vanessa and the tapes or the CDs and talk about her connection with Bill, aka William Afton. I'm guessing based off of last episode and also his tweet, he's going to try and tie together Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Afton and Vanessa, which... I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give Matt Pat a chance. And I've said this before, I'm not a huge fan of the FNAF lore anymore. I don't really care for it as much as I used to back in the day, so I'm just kind of letting Matt say his thing and I'm just gonna watch. And speaking of watch, hey, how about we do that? Hit the like button, subscribe, we're almost at 30 thousand subs it would be amazing if we could hit it by the end of the month and now without further ado game theory fnaf the secret afton fnaf security breach three two one here we go gregory do you see that bit of green spinach in your teeth have you ever heard of fortnite gregory oh he's you doing the meme floss. you need to floss gregory topical meme well, this and it just is brought back embarrassing. Tilted. So I guess it uh, is I'm very tough. I'm guys have this one, and I'll see you next game. Uh, I always come back, and uh, you know the bit. <sighs> yeah, it's gone on for did far too long. Did you just after. win? No, no, we did not, superstar. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sure. Hello, Internet, and welcome to Game Hello, Theory. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's proud to pick the nerdiest option available. Anyone that picks Monty <laughs> Golf is just I love this a meme. nerd. Woo! Gator, Gator Golf! <laughs> Joke's on you, Mark. Faz Cam is OP. Plus, being a nerd allowed me to discover the secret daycare room and sister location room. So who's the nerd now? Yeah, the ones with all the lore? Yeah. Me. It's still me. Last time we <laughs> dove into the time travel ball pit that is Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, I walked away with some, um, let's just call them divisive conclusions. Basically, it was an episode with three separate theories packaged together. We proposed one, that Glamrock Freddy wasn't just your average sentient animatronic, I but can rather was see possessed this. by the spirit of Michael I'm not 100%, doing everything though. he can to protect Gregory. This one was uh, generally well received, so yeah, cool, let's keep going. Bad, Why would Michael protect this random kid? Well, because two, Gregory Gregory, whether literally or symbolically, is Michael's younger brother, FNAF 4's crying child. I started to lose people at this point, but it was really theory number three <laughs> that threw us for a loop, because there's a good bit of evidence in both the game and in the history of the franchise to suggest that three, Gregory is a robot, the crying child's consciousness literally transplanted into a robotic body sometime after yeah, he dies not, in the not bite too, of 83. Uh, not a big fan of that one, I'll oh, say that. Oh, and there were a lot of strong opinions on that, with some people really liking the theory and others not so much. <laughs> Suddenly I was flooded by people saying uh. that I had rushed it out just to ride the trend or that it was my dumbest theory ever, to which I say no, Deadpool is Ernest Hemingway <laughs> is my dumbest theory ever. Closely followed yeah. by Wario being 10 feet tall. That's a anyway, classic. the outcry was so huge that I ended up trending on Twitter because of it. You know, didn't get much better from there. Weird sound. <laughs> that was my the tweet. <laughs> week, I was trending again because a group of performers juggled to One the of song Megalovania during uh, an event for none other yeah, second than time in game theory. It only took five years, my friends, but it looks like that steam code I gave him for Undertale finally paid off. They called me a madman. Anyway, like I said, a lot of heated opinions on the last one. Yeah. With Twitter basically boiling down this 18 minute long 4,000 word theory down to this single image. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Th it thanks is a funny thanks image. for not including literally anything else from that last video. So, before we get to the next theory all about Vanessa, let me just eleven twenty five. Oh, Jesus. I saw to the previous theory. Not because I'm convinced it's a 20 I'm right minute long video. This whole thing is basically. But because I think that the 
Gregory is right, crying yeah, child sure. theory currently fits the best with everything the game has like presented nine minutes to us talking thus far. About Vanessa, First, I guess. one of the key pieces All of right. evidence last episode was this line right at the start of the game where Freddy says to Gregory, I feel you are broken. This, to me, was a clear connection back to the crying child from FNAF 4 where psychic friend Fredbear says to him, you are broken. I mean, kind of speaks for itself. It's a parallel that's made stronger when you actually remember how that line gets delivered back in that game. There was really no way of knowing God, back when FNAF 4 was released, but thanks to a secret room found in Sister Location, we know that psychic friend Fredbear is actually a plushie with a walkie-talkie inside of him. A walkie-talkie that allowed William Afton to scare and manipulate his youngest son. Ooh, Father of the uh, Year, ladies gotcha. and gentlemen. Also know that throughout FNAF 4, all of William's lines use the color FFFF57. A bright oh, man, golden we're going to yellow. Color golden texting? Bunny, golden yellow makes sense. But the I iconic final days. lines of you're broken, I will put you back together actually use a different color. A lighter yellow. FFFFA0. Back then, we never really came to a satisfying explanation. Was it a mistake? Was it another <laughs> spirit? Scott's Was it trembling. Oh, shoot. But now, seven years of investigation later, we know for sure someone else is indeed talking yeah. here. Someone who, in sister location, is mistaken for his dad. Someone who turns purple just like his dad. Someone who can't die like his dad. And someone who had the lines immediately Please just prior die. apologizing to his kid brother, but when that didn't get through, decided to try comforting him through the voice of his best friend. It's Michael Afton, represented by a lighter color of yellow. A color that symbolically okay. connects him back to his father. In short, we have Michael Afton in FNAF 4 saying the line, you're broken to his brother through the voice of a Fredbear plush. I really and hope he security brings breach, up if the fact right that about all this, the line got changed. We again have him saying the same this line, is a lot of you're broken up. to his brother through the voice of another Freddy, this time Glamrock Freddy. I personally think it's a really cool narrative connection between all these games. But a lot of people were quick to point out that there's dialogue there in the go. game files that was cut Thank from God. the final oh. release, where Freddy says that Gregory is bleeding. Specifically, he says, Your arm is cut badly, and I am detecting blood. You are injured. This, for many people, disproved that, that Gregory is an animatronic. And uh, I actually have two things to say about that. First, when I've used cut lines of dialogue in the past, the internet has in no uncertain <laughs> terms told me that I can't. But uh, now apparently it's okay. Yeah, yeah get him, man. Consistent there, guys. And honestly, I think cutting it, regardless of the reason, shows that it didn't fit the final creative intent of the game. But I, I anyway, do think if that's he's the got case, a point there. I gotta bring I this line up. A cut line of dialogue discovered by GB or a recharged in the game files. This one is Freddy saying, Gregory, I know why you're not in the customer database. I remember you from the... And it cuts off. Obviously, it's vague. It's kept very intentionally vague. But it also shows that Gregory is special in a way that the other disappeared kids aren't. There's a reason he's not in the customer base. He's from somewhere specific that Freddy knows about. If I were to guess, I'd say, like, the underground pizzeria. But, you know, that's just me hypothesizing. Adding to the Gregory is special idea is the fact that Chica knows his that's name. Crazy. She calls it out in the middle of the pizzeria. <laughs> Strange detail for a kid who supposedly has no records in the system. Secondly, yeah, that is weird. And I, uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but in the books, because everybody loves when I go back the to that novel one, animatronic trilogy. children do actually oh, yeah, bleed. Charlie. They can also cry and feel cold. Heck, they can even feel hungry the and eat. The fortune in the you new book You don't even have to go so to the books good. for that one. You can just see it with Chica's pizza obsession and security breach. So to tell me that a robot child can't bleed? Yeah. I think you gotta really look at the franchise that we're talking about here. And for every Everyone who's confused about <sighs> the timeline of Crying Child still being alive and the fact that he would be older at this point, that wouldn't actually be the case. Animatronic children in the books stay at yeah, whatever they stay age, age they're built to be. Charlotte Emily actually had four separate versions Toddler, of herself teen, built, one young for adult, each adult, stage of her life. So that way she could grow older, but she would just assume a new animatronic body each time. So yeah. Crying Child still being young would actually make more sense here. And to everyone saying, why would he say stuff like, Don't want to be crushed and twisted into a meat pretzel. No, again, Charlotte <laughs> in the books is shocked to learn her true nature in the final chapters. Her consciousness had been grafted onto a childhood toy while she was alive, Ella. and after her tragic death, had been placed inside of a robot body to function <laughs> as her memory. So for all she knew, she was just a normal human being just I like anyone else. Is it trilogy. dumb? Yeah, I'll say that it is. Is it complicated? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. But it's is it FNAF, giving us insight it into the rules that Scott and everyone who touches this universe operate by? Yes. 
It undeniably is. Lastly, for everyone who spammed my feed with pictures of sad white boys in striped shirts saying that you had found the crying child, thank you for your help uncovering the lore. I get the joke. Green All white boys boy. with brown hair and striped shirts are apparently the crying child. But I'm remember running. what series we're talking about here, friends. Visual design details have always been an important part of figuring these games out. Take a look at Baby. During sister location, she has green eyes. Yeah, but when I feel you like play her minigame, she has blue ones. At least until she kills Elizabeth Afton, who... Lo and behold, I feel like Matt is really eyes. trying to Superficial design features keep the like idea of everything has Are they the be-all and no end-all of evidence? No, but they do well, no help support an argument. So a little brown-haired boy in shorts with a shirt and two stripes? Seems sus. Have you ever heard of Among Us, Gregory? Speaking of eyes, for all the complaints about the last the episode, no one seemed to have any Just answers to what I ground. see as the two strongest pieces of physical evidence here. Why does Gregory look different when Freddy gets Roxy's x-ray eyes? You look different to me. And secondly, why does Gregory's vision glitch when he sees Vanny? Why does he have such a weird visual reaction to her and to literally no other character in the game? Well, you hear that high-pitched <laughs> ringing sound as Vanny skips and gets closer? I still think she could be using an illusion disc. I mean, she switches between Vanessa it and Vanny so fast. It seems to be a fast. disruptor that makes her invisible to animatronics with older true, model but... eyes. In the fire ending, Freddy, who couldn't see her at any point in the game, explicitly says, I can see you now. I have new eyes. I mean, this is exactly how the much-hated sound illusion yeah, discs exactly. from the books work, creating a high-frequency sound to make people and robots invisible and or look differently. But I'm already fighting a losing battle over here, so I'm just gonna yeah. pass over that one. Yeah. Anyway, to me, it reads is Gregory's robotic eyes being disrupted. I mean, why have CRT lines over the screen and not some other type of filter to show that his vision is getting disrupted? In fact, why have the oh, same God. CRT lines as the security cameras all around the pizza place? <laughs> okay, but there's Gregory one final the piece of evidence I'd like to talk it. about to help solidify that previous theory before we move on, and that is the screenshot here of the final oh, scene one. from the Savior okay. ending, where you rescue Vanny from uh, the This was the one he brand. tweeted and, out. Uh, I use quotation marks here because there aren't any official sources giving names to the various endings. In the game files, they're just labeled as S1, S2, and S3 based on the number of stars that you get for them. It is worth noting, though, that this is the only three-star ending that currently exists, which seems to imply that it has some level of importance to it. But here we see our three yeah. main characters, Gregory, Freddy, and Vanessa, all sitting on a hill, which, as I pointed out last time, is very similar to the FNAF 6 gravestone I still think hill. it's but just a hill. that's not what's important here. What I There's no point gravestones. Out is the ice Am I missing Gregory something? Gregory is holding a golden Freddy-shaped ice cream with part of its head bitten off. If Gregory is not meant to parallel back to I mean, the crying the child hill, in any way, pizza shape, or form, then this the detail pizza blocks, is just mean you know. and irresponsible. This ice cream is the crying child story coming full circle. He was terrified of animatronics and ended up being bitten by the Golden Freddy spring suit, but now he's the one sitting on a hill taking a big old bite out of Golden Freddy. That is not me reading too much into this. That is me lightly interpreting a very clear yeah. image that was put directly into that this is a game by crazy the detail. It is barely even subtle. And despite him wearing a blue shirt in most of the endings, here his shirt is colored purple. No, it's not. That's like the lighting. What the hell? What? Color. No. Couple that with literally everything it's sunset. Else, the lighting. Come on, man. The fact that he goes into the charging station. So I stand by my theory that Gregory is an animatronic of the crying child. Is it a perfect answer? No. Do I love the fact that it complicates the lore even more? No. Shot. no. But does it answer the most questions with the evidence that we have? I believe it does. And it's a heck of a lot better than Fazgoo. But now, honestly, I'd take that over Fazgoo. Into this episode, uh, no let's cap. actually uh, stop to talk about Vanessa, shall we? Last episode, I made a passing statement about how time, this I final mean, image felt to me like the three Afton children getting reunited: crying child Michael and Elizabeth Afton, William's daughter that done got scooped by baby back in sister location. It's a scene that, to me, feels like the narrative finally giving them a sense of closure after they quite literally die as a result of their dad's evil deeds. Last time, I briefly made mention of Vanessa's blonde hair and green eyes, <laughs> which is the same as Elizabeth. And here, in this ending, we actually see two scenes of her wearing the signature Afton purple. Even the ice cream cone, that is as purple. opposed to I something mean, like job. Gregory's novelty pop, is a potential callback to her death, where Baby delivered an ice cream cone to her before she did the It's scoop. not the and same ice cream. And the connections cream. between these I two characters, it's more than just a couple of visual similarities. The biggest secret in Security Breach right now is a series of 16 retro Yay, CDs, invisible collectibles that 
only Freddy can see hidden in every obscure corner of the game's map. Then, to play these things, you actually need to have also found the secret sister location room that we talked about last time. Now, these CDs Interesting are... Interesting that he doesn't um, well, uh, talk about they're, their own. they're problematic. They open up a whole separate can of worms. They're recordings of therapy sessions following two separate individuals. These things patient are long 46 and, and patient very 71. Detailed. The exact identity of patient 46 is a theory for next time that will absolutely <laughs> launch us into yet another flame war, yeah, but I early think in patient 71's tapes, we learned that it's actually Gregory. Vanessa speaking, Hello, Vanessa. Uh, which I don't How like. How are you feeling today? These are recordings from therapy sessions that Vanessa had while she was at the job for the FNAF AR game Special Delivery. She cool. mentions speaking to a man named Lewis on Lewis, several occasions, my man. and we discover that she's also buying He's fake a fur, simp. both of which are things that we see in emails from FNAF AR. Like By the me. last of Vanessa's recordings, she's leaving that job for a new job somewhere else, most likely the job of security guard here yep. in Security Breach. I'm needed somewhere else now. But let's dive into the good stuff, shall we? In the Vanessa's second nuggets. tape, we learn about a custody battle that happened between her parents. Her dad won using manipulative tactics, forcing his daughter to falsely testify. Your dad made you follow instructions, didn't he? I'm talking about the custody battle between your mum and your dad. Your dad didn't play fair, did he? He used to make your mum look bad in court. Didn't the After losing say custody of, of her daughter, true. Vanessa's mother, well, here's what the tape does. I know your mum after she lost the custody case. It glitches, implying that her mother ended her own life, which would explain mm. why Mrs. Afton is missing from all the games, and why she may have wound up being rebuilt as the motherly Ballora in Sister Location. Especially because the, uh, that, wouldn't you know, it sings bots. about her inescapable depression now that the walls of her house are empty. All I see is an empty room. No more <laughs> Look how sad she looks. Oh my gosh. We also hear Vanessa lines like this. Oh, you like those? Apparently, the janitor on this floor has a garden and has been putting bouquets in the offices here for years. Vanessa likes flowers. A small detail, but you know me, small details could often be the biggest evidence. Who else do we know in the series that has an affinity for flowers? Well, think back to FNAF 4. Hey, Remember I this called this out. random empty bedroom with a huge portrait of a flower on the wall? <laughs> I didn't Elizabeth's call that out, but I did bring up FNAF 4. Scooped. Then you uh. have Vanessa lines like this. Lots of people know more than I do. Some Sometimes I need to listen. Now, this might be a stretch, but I believe it's referring to when Elizabeth got scooped by Baby. Her dad had repeatedly and explicitly warned her not to go near Baby, but she didn't listen. And in doing so, she ended up getting herself trapped inside the animatronic. Don't tell Daddy that I'm here. I Wait, but Vanessa's not so British. Me. I don't know why he won't let me come see you. Unless that's the stupid... Vanessa also Video says game. in her tapes that she doesn't like dark basements. I have a craft space in my basement. Maybe I could Why come up with something you could learn to do. I don't like dark basements. It's another line that seems to be pointing us in the direction of Baby, who is trapped underground for years in Circus Baby's entertainment and rentals, looking for a way back to the surface. I've been out before, but they always put me back. They always put us back inside. I will There's say these are interesting parallels. I don't know if it's go. what the game and is going for. And put one final nail in this coffin. Right back in the second CD, we actually learn the name of Vanessa's father. I feel like I know oh, your dad, dude, too. I hate this. No. Right? Bill is short for William. That's just the game trolling us with a coincidence, right? Wrong. You see, going back to FNAF AR, we learn that Vanessa's last name begins with an A. Oh, From it. there, we can connect the dots. Bill yeah. A. I knew William about this already, but, but I, I still Baby really don't want at the end her of to be six? an <laughs> Oh, yeah, she did. But you see how effective that was. How are you not dead? I mean, to be fair, the thought that burning him is going to work is stupid because people have tried to burn him to death no less than three times in this franchise. True. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work. But here's the kicker. At the end of the game, we meet the Blob, the a weird blob. tentacle monster made of all Let's the original go. members of the series. FNAF 1's Chica and Bonnie, FNAF 2's Mangle, Sister Mangu. Location's Funtime Freddy, a random endoskeleton crawling out of the bottom, the puppet mask without tears, I might point out. Oh, what the Baby's hell? I never face. noticed it's now. Don't tears. get me started on this being Baby's original face and not Scrap Baby's updated look where she came back to FNAF 6 in. I have words about that. Anyway, look at them all here Same. on screen. You notice anything strange? Most of the animatronics' eyes, eyes are lit up. Funtime yep. Freddy, Chica, Mangle, even this random endoskeleton at the bottom. But now take a look it's back a FNAF 2 at Baby's as well, I think. The eyes are blacked out. So although the blob has absorbed Baby's body during the burning down of Freddy Fazbear's pizza place, her spirit, the spirit of Elizabeth Afton, is no longer present. It is unaccounted for. It is on the loose. And as such, potentially at 
at large within the game. Is she, in some way, Vanessa? And if so, how? The truth is, I don't know. Yeah, this I've been waiting got for my this. brain oh, in so many okay. knots, I might as well be a sailboat. I don't think there's any evidence to support any conclusion at this point in time. But I do know that this is what the evidence is heavily pointing us towards. The design similarities, the missing spirit, the purple color, the ice cream, the voice yeah, but if lines, there's the no personality traits. And again, for the narrative how, theme of three just, acting I, I kids don't know. reuniting I, I, and moving on after don't a traumatic really feel past. Like it's it gives right. everyone this nice full circle ending. Even it does. if it's only meant I'm to be I'm not going to disagree. And the screen really does feel like it's the end. But it's like, how? For these three characters. Maybe next time we'll finally see some new faces. So enough about them. We're moving past those three. There's still other mysteries that we have to solve here. What happened to Glamrock Bonnie? Yeah, Who is Glamrock Bonnie. 46 and why are they here? What's the deal with that room full of post-it notes? Oh my god, yeah, so many one, videos coming out too. It's, it's important. And did you happen to notice the other missing hey, animatronics? Subscribe because there's a lot more reactions to Game Theory coming, it seems. They might be hiding in plain sight. So next time we get Who? to cover some mysteries that don't require us talking about dead characters getting rebuilt into robots. Thank God! <laughs> Scratch that. We're, we're talking about William Afton. This is kind of unavoidable at Damn this point. Damn it! Oh, this <laughs> franchise is so ridiculous. Anyway, next time we're going to sweep up a few other mysteries as we try to make oh, more sense out of the game that quite literally threw everything against the wall to see what would stick. Speaking of things True. through the walls, why don't you split- I'm not gonna listen to your sponsorship. Alright, that video was not really what I was expecting. I didn't think he'd be on Gregory for so long. Like, that was the majority of- that was over half the video was talking about the last theory. Which, you know, understandable, there were a lot of people, a lot of people, who were upset about that one, you know, me kind of included. Again, I don't really care a whole lot about the lore, so I just, I like to watch MatPat to see, you know, what he thinks, because, you know, at the end of the day, their theories, you know, they're not supposed to be taken as fact. You know, I think MatPat, he gets a lot of hate, but his theories and his videos are certainly interesting, and the points he brings up, they do make you think, you know, whether he's right or wrong, doesn't matter, it gets you thinking. Anyways, um... Gregory being a robot, I hope that's not the case. Being the crying child, again, I hope that's not the case. Michael being Glamrock Freddy, I can kinda see, but again, I I just want these guys to be new characters, man. Again, Vanessa being Elizabeth, if there's no explanation for Elizabeth dying, possessing baby, and then being Vanessa, you know, a, a human, allegedly, allegedly a human, <laughs> um, in, you know, not only FNAF AR, but also uh, Security Breach, then I, I, it's, I find it very hard to believe that theory. So if Matt can come up with a, you know, a theory for Elizabeth no longer being a little girl possessing baby, and, you know, hopefully almost dying in Pizza Sim, because god dang, just kill off all these characters already, give me some new ones. From being a little girl, to being baby, to being now not only human again with a soul, but now also being a grown woman, I don't know. There's, there's definitely a lot that doesn't get explained in this game and it's very frustrating but yeah i think that's gonna do it for this reaction video i think next time will probably be another game theory fnaf it seems like he has a lot of ideas and a lot of videos coming out soon i've been watching his gt live playthrough of security breach and he's he's very hard set on making a theory about glamrock bonnie which i would love to see so i i have a feeling that'll probably be the next one and then again in this video he talked about the uh, staff bot Silo, as well as Patient 46, as well as some other character that he says is hiding in plain sight. I don't know, I was talking during that, so I didn't really listen to what he was saying, but yeah, a lot of videos coming out. So remember, hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future reactions to some more FNAF Game Theory, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.